All right, so continuing on, let's get the fourth plank in there. Oh, great. Salve, welcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe this is how it ends. Oh, you're gonna die. Well, that, that's oh, fine. No, 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 no. Wolf Pierce, what are you doing? Get back from there. That? What? Please. I'm Good luck with that, I'm out of here. I'll talk to him. Is that what Centilla would want? You... Well... If... No, I am out. Yeah, Wherever okay, I should are. have. Centilla, my love. I'm sorry. Oh, Pierce, no! Yeah, yeah, go, go pray for Opius. I got work to do here, so you should get out of here. Missing piece, insert plaque. Boom. Return all four plaques. Enter the great temple. Alright. It opens. It's not trapping me in here. That's good. <laughs> I thought like Hades, Pluto, whatever, Egyptian and Sumerian versions, they're all just trapping me in here. Speak. Well, sir, Hades, Lord of Many, Nurgle, the Fierce One, or Pluto, Father of Riches. Pluto, Father of Riches. Oh, isn't Hades like the better one? Pluto. Okay, so this is Greek, I guess. Hades, lot of many, brought me audience. These are different versions of the temple. And this is Osiris, lot of silence. And then this is the oldest, the Sumerian version. Nargal the fierce one. Uh, we are in space. Super futuristic. Oh wow. Well this is unexpected, so we are in a spaceship. Orbiting Earth, huh? And here Hello? you are. Allow me to introduce myself. As you have already gathered, I've been known Herculean, by confront the creator of the Golden Rule. Nergal to the Sumerians, Osiris to the Egyptians, Hades to the Greeks, and Pluto to the Romans. But the one constant through it all has been my title, God of the Underworld. And I've been watching you with curiosity, mortal, ever since your arrival. You are unlike the others, aren't you? And what is more, you carry a weapon that was never intended for mortals to wield, and you do it so reasonably. Mm -hmm, I but do. There will be time for your reckoning later. Later. First, as a reward for undoing the desecration of my obelisk, I will allow you to satisfy your curiosity. Ask what you will. Uh, what's your story? My story is many thousands of years long. You will need to be more specific. What do you wish to know? You're a god? It is a matter of perspective. God is a label I was given by the mortals, not what I name myself. Hmm. Your ancestors revered me because to them, my knowledge and technology made me incomprehensibly powerful just as you might seem so to an insect. But despite all that, there are rules even I must obey. So they went the super high-tech route, huh? Why do you look and sound like a man? My kin and I all adopted this form long ago, so that we might better understand and communicate with your kind. In time, we grew fond of the sensory delights it affords. Desire, joy, ecstasy, even rage and sorrow, while an acquired taste. I see your true form. No. 
Long ago I swore to myself that I would remain in this form for as long as we remained among your kind. I must honor that. All right, and who's the woman on your left? This is my beloved. Like me, she has been known by many. She a statue? Eresh Kigel to the Sumerians, Isis to the Egyptians, Persephone to the Greeks, and Proserpina to the Romans. Or perhaps you might know her as the goddess of springtime, the cycle of life and renewal. Hmm. All right. Your gaze lingers too long. Hmm. And who on your right? That is my servant. You would have met by the river, mm -hmm. though she wears many faces and goes by many names. Kumutabal to the Sumerians, Kurti to the Egyptians, Charon to the Greeks, and Charon to the Romans. Her role is to ferry souls between the mortal world and this one, and to make their transition as seamless as possible. For that, she earned herself the infamous, if erroneous, moniker, the Ferryman. We will talk more later. For now, ask your questions. All right, something else. As you wish. And what is this place? It has come to be known simply as the Underworld. And it exists because of a wager I made long ago. And what is the wager? That is a long story. One that began over three years That humans years can't ago. control themselves and are bad? That's why you made the golden rule? You see, long ago, my kin and I set out from our home on Elysium to search for other forms of life among the stars. Mm -hmm. We discovered your planet and witnessed your kind evolving from primates into something lawless and barbaric. You all but destroyed yourselves, your two short lives being extinguished by violence and ignorance and disease. Yet Proserpina saw raw potential in you. You persuaded the rest of us it would be squandered without our intervention and stewardship. So we revealed ourselves to your people in a place called Sumer. We offered guidance in agriculture, tool craft, and law, and you called us gods. For a time, you flourished, but soon you were too many for us to oversee. And as you spread from that cradle of civilization, mm -hmm. we saw something distinct. We had sown the seeds of dependency and confusion. And soon you return to your old ways of violence and ignorance, this time in our name. Hmm. My kin had seen enough and gave up on your kind, condemning you as barbaric and chaotic, scarcely more than animals. We began preparations to return to Elysium, our home world, a utopia unspoilt by conflict and unimaginable in its beauty. But my Proserpina could not bear to abandon your kind without guidance, and knowing it would force the rest of us to leave her behind, she made an extraordinary sacrifice. She gave up her immortality to descend permanently to the ranks of humankind. And so she began her inescapable trajectory toward death. Horrified, I acted swiftly. I placed her in suspended animation in a deep frozen sleep to prevent age and sickness from claiming her. And then I pleaded with Proserpina's father, who the Romans called Jupiter, to bring her with us to Elysium. It was and is my hope that once there, we might one day learn to undo what she has done to herself. But he refused. I did everything I could to persuade him that he would not he would rigidly uphold his final pronouncement. Humans were unworthy of ascension to Elysium, and no exceptions would be made. But seeing that I was aggrieved, he proposed a wager, the terms of which were as follows. If even one human city could prove itself capable of living without sin for a single year, okay, one year. the Proserpina and all of humanity would be permitted to join us in Elysium. That's why you made the golden rule. My part would be to remain behind, the last of my kind, to watch over you, without interfering, and to sit in silent judgment. And so my reward has been to languish here, enduring a 3,000 year winter, waiting for the day your kind proves itself worthy of her faith in you so that I might take her with me to Elysium, and 
undone Thor, my goddess of springtime. And here I am, after all this time, still waiting. Hmm. And who are your kids? There were also gods who, like me, have been known by many names. But perhaps you knew them by their Roman names. This is the Roman Our time. leader, Jupiter, as well as Neptune, Saturn, Juno, Minerva, Mars, Venus, Apollo, Diana, Vulcan, Vesta, Ceres, and of course, my beloved Persephone. And who built the city? As the first wave of your kind arrived from Sumer, I had them build a city in their own fashion, so that they might be comfortable and recreate their lives here. I had them build the entrance as a vertical shaft leading to baths to cleanse them of the sins of their former lives and to prevent escape. I watched wave after wave of Sumerians arrive, and as their civilization declined over the centuries, they were replaced by Egyptians. Of course, believing themselves to be the superior civilization, the Egyptians promptly built over what had been built before made all the same mistakes. After another thousand years, the Greeks began to arrive, and then the Romans, and they all did the same thing. They built upon the underworlds of their predecessors, renamed their gods, and ensured their foundations were forgotten. Hmm. And, uh, how did you decide who comes here? To ensure the wage was fair, it was important that my subjects were chosen at random. To this end, I had my servant distribute a thousand tokens fashioned from silver, a rare element at the time, across all of Sumer. Whoever died while in possession of one of them would be located by my servant and ferried to this place, with no memory of how they arrived. As the tokens were discovered, they were traded, smelted, and fashioned into trinkets, and eventually coins spreading to Egypt like seeds on the wind. Later, when they spread to Greece, they would come to be known as Charon's Oval, or as coins for the ferryman. Some placed coins in the mouths of their dead, hoping they would awaken here, though they had no way of knowing which coins were fashioned from the original tokens. In fact, almost all of the tokens are accounted for, only two remain. And so after this wave destroys itself, as it is destined to do, your kind would have squandered the last of its potential to ascend beyond this rock. And Persephone is along with it. Hmm. And how did the humans learn about the underworld? It is a regrettable story. One of the first men who came to this place was a king of Sumer and a troublemaker. To be rid of him, I returned him to his people on the condition that my servant erased his memories of this place. But the erasure did not take completely, and he told stories of this place as if describing memories of a dream. His tales were committed to writing, which came to be known as the Epic of Gilgamesh, hmm. and his words were twisted and distorted over generations. Later, the Egyptians would adapt to the stories of the underworld, making them wildly intricate and labyrinthine. Their Book of the Dead and Book of Gates bore less and less resemblance to this place in their priests' pursuit of profit. Then, when the Greeks began to arrive, they proved far more cunning. And in a series of incidents that will not be repeated, hmm. five of them escaped. A warrior named Heracles, oh, two yeah. kings named Sisyphus and Theseus, a poet named Orpheus, and a Trojan named Aeneas. They each told embellished tales of this place, how to get here, and how to escape. And so from Sumer to Egypt, Greece to Rome, your kind has always told each other stories about this place, though each story contained only a seed of truth. Hmm, something else? Of course. What's the next one? Are you responsible for the Golden Rule? That is merely the name your people have given to it, but yes, it is my doing. Alright, why don't people go? That is a story dating back to the very first wave. After the Sumerians finished building their city, the self-declared ruler threw a banquet to celebrate. Now this man was unmarried, and many women were vying to become his wife. 
prestigious position of power and influence in a new world. Of all the women, two were particularly ambitious. Both were beautiful, and both arrived at the banquet wearing eye-catching dresses and painted faces, their hair woven in elaborate fashion. The first woman, recognizing that she would require an advantage to win the ruler's affection, draped herself in jewelry, ornate necklaces, bracelets and rings fashioned from gold. Seeing this ostentatious display, the second woman grew envious, for she had no such jewelry at her disposal. She prayed aloud to any gods that would listen to cover her in gold, and when her prayer went unanswered, she took matters into her own hands. While the others indulged at the banquet, the second woman summoned the first for a discussion in a quiet place. She checked that nobody was watching and pushed her rival from the top of the ziggurat where she broke her neck on the rocks below. Yeah. But I was watching, and I decided to answer her prayer. I took the golden bow left behind by Diana, and I shot that woman in the heart covering her from head to toe in a layer of molten gold. Hmm. And I left her to stand there, that she might serve as a grim reminder of what befalls those who sin in my domain. But that was not enough, for the entire city was tainted by her sin, and the wager could no longer be won. So I had no choice but to wipe the slate clean. I gilded them all to make way for a new way began the wager again, and to this day, each of them, and all who came after, line the halls of this city, inanimate, but conscious, hmm. suspended in time with only their sight and hearing preserved, so they may bear witness to and lament the folly of your kind for eternity, the silent golden sentinel. So you're responsible for destroying all these lives? I give your kind a second chance in life, as well as ample warning about my law. Well, yeah. And when you disobey, and you always disobey, you force my hand, bringing terrible suffering upon yourselves. And so you ask if I am the one destroying your lives. And I say, no, you destroy yourselves. I am merely the means by which you do it. You made the rule. Where did the golden bows come from? When my kin departed, they left behind many relics which I inherited. A consolation prize of sorts. The golden bow originally belonged to one of my kin, who the Romans called Diana. As my collection of golden statues grew, I chose the most ferocious among them and equipped them each with a duplicate of her bow and tasked them with hunting down the forsaken at my behest. They became known simply as Furies. Hmm. And what do you consider a sin? I've always considered that the cornerstone of morality is the ability to determine right from wrong on one's own. Hmm. No attempt to lay out rules like your Code of Hammurabi or your Twelve Tables of the Roman Republic can ever cover all possible scenarios. This should come as no surprise to you since the core principle has been expressed in many forms by many of your civilizations. The Egyptians made a rudimentary attempt with do to the doer to make him do. The Greeks refined it with avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. The Roman Stoics added treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Even the so-called cultists hiding among you often say do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It is the simplest of concepts, and each one of you is born with the faculties required to apply it to any situation. Yet we don't do it. Yet none of the peoples who expressed this rule were able to uphold it. Curious, is it not? Hmm. The principles is not as easy to apply as it sounds. Doesn't seem like you've been upholding it either. I've always lived my life that way. Huh. <laughs> For you, perhaps. And how do you know when people sit? I'm able to commune with all of the statues in the city. Their ears are my ears, and their eyes are my eyes. Is Persephone connected to the statues in the same way? If she was still conscious, I suppose she could, but she's not. Why do you ask? Hmm. 
No reason. Then what an odd question. I have seen some terrible things down there. You didn't consider a sin. How could you let them happen? Do you plan to speak in sweeping generalizations? Or are you going to give me an example? Uh, suicide. Ah, yes. The dead bonds. Mm -hmm. Taking one's own life is a self-directed act. It is not one that is done to others, however they may be affected by it. Therefore, it cannot be said that one who commits suicide has done anything unto others. It seems like an extremely literal interpretation of the rule. Applying this rule always requires us to interpret the meaning of the words. A literal interpretation helps to minimize the ambiguities of your primitive language. If our language is of ambiguity, doesn't that make the rule inherently subjective and unreliable? Hmm. Supposing you are right, then my law has been broken, and I should turn you all to gold immediately. Is that what you want? No, of course not. Uh, I am right and you know it. Then your desire to be right outweighs your desire to supply. Is he gonna you kill will me? make a fine statue. Oh no. <laughs> Do you really think you can wound me, a god, with that primitive weapon? <laughs> Let's find out, Pathetic. shall we? Pathetic. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. You vile, sacred creature. I have taken her crown. Rewind time and show Pluto you have her crown. I am dead as hell. Hmm. So I am supposed to destroy the glass and take her crown and run away, but then I get shot. And then I die. Because he's got guards all over the place. Hmm. So how exactly am I going to be able to get this and not die in the process of getting it? An interesting question. With an interesting answer, perhaps? Probably. Oh, okay. Regal. Yep, take me to space. I can just walk back, huh? So this is just a portal. So wait, does the real world, I guess, Charon can take me to the real world. Hello. No. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. No. You're a god. No. You can sound like a man. See your true form. Woman on your left. On your right. Talk about something else. What is this place? What are the rager? Blah, 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 blah. Who are your kin? Who built the city? How to decide who comes here? How did humans learn about the underworld? And talk about something else. Are you responsible for the golden rule? Why turn people to gold? Sorry about that lady with the jewelry and she killed it. So it's not destroying all these lives. Where did the golden bows come from? What do you consider a sin? Principles are not easy to apply. How do you know when people sin? Because they're not connected in the same way, no reason. How did that happen? Price gouging for life saving medicine. The merchant. How is that inconsistent with the rule I have outlined? He wouldn't want someone else to demand an outrageous price the medicine if he needed if he was dying. I disagree. Having watched this merchant, that is precisely what he would expect from others. And he would be quite capable of paying the price anyway. Hmm. Now tell me, hmm. what... A dead bond. You speak of the money lender. How is that inconsistent with the rule? He wouldn't want to be trapped in a 30-year labor contract because of a loan. And he would never have signed a contract pledging his labor for 30 years. All he did was enforce the terms of a contract signed voluntarily by others. The whole concept of debt bondage like slavery is unethical. It's illegal under international law where I'm from. Ignoring your irritating sense of moral superiority. This is interesting. I'm curious, how do people escape poverty? 
It's customary to take out a loan to buy a house and in some places to pay for an education. I see. And how long might it take such a person to repay their debt? Uh, 30 years. Depends. Typically decades. Sometimes their entire life. I fail to see how your system of loans is significantly different to a debt bondsman signing over his labor for 30 years. It's not the same thing. Hmm. Supposing you're right. I'm right. Then okay, great. You will make... Golden bow. <laughs> You may be immortal, but a beloved is it? The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I got it. Now let's get out of here. Can I dodge and weave. Bob and weave. I have your beloved's crown. That's what's supposed to happen anyway. Okay. Keep keep doing the S shape. You can't hit me, I'm fast as frick. Oh, look at me go. Uh, please don't take 100 million years to reload. I, I got the crown, I'm almost out. I just gotta go. Just stay a little bit further. Please load. Hello? I need to let like, go, man. Thank you. Alright. I'm out of here. Don't shoot me. I got a life, I want to live. Hmm. Alright, leave me out here. Alright, now that I have her sta uh, crown, what am I proving to him that I'm a time traveler? Hello. A little Hello? busy. Alright, loop through time ten times and I'm getting the ending as well. So where is the uh Wait, did I not get the crown? What? What? I, I, I took a crown. I spammed E on it. Oh my god, I didn't get the damn crown, did I? Well, I guess I gotta go and loop through time again. Well, you know what? I won't do this episode then. I'll, I'll use the cisterns now, because I got the key. That's probably another achievement for doing it like that. So here is the with the rock. And if you have a key for the cisterns, it's right here. Alright, load the way in. This is the way to the upper cisterns. Alright, unlock the upper cistern with Dooley's key. Lead resolved, out of gold. Is there no achievement for this captive? Nobody sent me. What's going on here? Find all three missing persons. Loot. Oh, that's in this old book. Hello. He said the gods. Huh. Who did this to you? Where's the way out? The only. Who will I release you? What about the others? 
Let's get out of here oh. together. Thank you. He's here. You distract him. Stay right here and keep him talking while I look for something I can use. Yeah, yeah, okay. We're getting this ending again. But I came in the straight way this time. What did you do with Centilla? Where is she? In your human garbage. So that is how it's going. It's a shame you'd have been looping through time forever until you get... You remember Al? You see, but I'm surprised you hadn't noticed. Mm -hmm. Here I was. He was a mo and because I'm and when he finally saw the few tip, the next time I awoke, you showed up. I'd have preferred if you'd given me more time to it. Almost fifty. I should be grateful. In any case, there's no escape for you except the path that Al took. Better to end it. So mm -hmm. you discovered my secret. So what? What are you going to do about it? Uh. You're gonna die. Uh, you're, you're gonna figure out. Uh, of course, there's no way you could have. Man will always sin sooner, or later, as I told you the first time, by reliving the same day over and over again forever. And I will continue living long after your dust. Well, no, I'm the last one. What? And I have found a way to prolong my life indefinitely, to cheat death. I have become, in effect, as immortal as the gods. Can you honestly say you would not wish the same for yourself? Let's see you cheat away out Do of you this. Really think you could? I'm gonna let her have this one. Centilla, where is she? I'm right here, father. Ah! Yeah, ah! Shall suffer <laughs> the sins of the one. one. I have to go. Hey, what's happening? Yeah, to yeah, you? I'm teleporting. That light, it, it's so bright. I have created a time parallel. Be back in time, and we gonna pop back up here. Okay, so if I do it, I'll end up here. Okay, interesting. Uh, hi there. Albert. Uh, get funny, I was just reading an old descript. For it, it said apparently the only person. That was uh, me. I found your clothes hanging uh, on the loose. So that's oh inside now. Uh, yeah. Now uh, you're getting it. Get out of this place. There's a way out right here. To the aqueduct. Right, so this is another ending, not the not the best one. Still, I gotta go talk to Pluto, and I, I can't believe I didn't take the thing, her her headdress, whatever it is. Good idea. I mean, no one's gonna find this place. It's just a, it's a simulation place. Right, it's, the, it's not even real. We're in space right now, and the Scaron guys the servant he's gonna take us back from here you're back he's here uh, in a moment why don't you tell uh, I discovered you're not who you said you were I'm meeting you 2,000 years ago ah, I see I thought you might well now you know I suppose you have questions uh -huh. Who are you, you can just call me Cap. I do not that most no. people that my role. How do I die? Most ask. I want to know. Pluto says the coins Al and I had were the last in existence. What does that mean for you? It means I am now bereft of purpose. There is nobody else to ferry here. Five thousand years. About these coins. Perhaps you have heard the tales of well, along my order. Yeah, that's any what does that mean for you? There is All right, can you return us another living? I see living? no point in keeping you here, but I have to ask one thing: that you keep this to yourself. Look, here comes Al now. Al, it's so kind of lost. There was a supposed my new friend. I know. Maybe. How could you? She left a t I here. I don't know what became of you, or if you'll ever read this, 
but I want you to know. Sounds like you meant a lot to. You two look. Sounds good. And you. All right, get on for yourself. All right. Ending two or four. How many might have survived if you had confronted the god of the underworld? Well, more. And I guess I'll find out. I just had to go grab her helmet or whatever. And uh, bring it back to him and show it to him, I guess. But look at this. See what I got. You know, I got this because I'm a time traveler. Can we skip? Thank you. I want to end the episode right now so that I can do some other stuff. It's been good, you know, but I learned quite a bit about the game. We've got another ending, though. I don't know what the last ending will be, though. I guess I'll find out. Anyway, see you all in the next one.